Hey there. My name is... Get out of here. Hi, I'm John. And today I'm going to talk to you about the origins of us, humans. First of all, I'll explain what a species is. Species are a group of organisms with similar genetic and morphological traits that are capable of interbreeding. The general consensus among scientists is that humans, or homo sapiens, evolved from apes over millions of years. Humans are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and meat. They walk upright on two legs and have large skulls with cranial capacities of about 1,590 centimeters cubed. The average height of a human is approximately 1.7 meters for males and 1.6 meters for females. Humans, due to their heightened intellect, can survive just about anywhere, which is fairly evident considering we are found everywhere around the world. The earliest member of our lineage to walk upright regularly were the Australopithecines, with fossil records of them dating back to nearly 3.3 million years ago. The oldest known fossil related to our genus, Homo, dates back to approximately 2.8 million years ago. Just like the Australopithecines, early Homo species walked upright on two legs also, such as Homo erectus and Homo habilis. The first semblance of humans as we see today began around 200,000 years ago. These archaic humans had some of the features in modern humans today, such as rounded skulls, but the bone structure was still fairly different. This formation of a new and distinct species in the course of evolution is known as speciation. Modern humans are believed to have originated from eastern Africa, and bones have been found dating back to nearly 50,000 years ago. These people have a striking resemblance to that of humans today. The distinctive round head, nearly vertical brow, protruding chin, and upright spine were all evident in these hominids, but not nearly as developed as they are today. Humans today also have much thinner bones compared to our earlier ancestors. There is also evidence that shows that Homo sapiens weren't the only hominids to have lived in that time. In fact, fossil records of at least two other types of hominids have been found dating back to that same time, the Denisovans and the better known Neanderthals. Neanderthals had distinctly different features compared to humans, such as heavy-set jutting brows as well as thick sloping skulls. All these species coexisted for a time, until, of course, the Homo sapiens drove them to extinction. These hominids interbreeded, which is why some people today still have traces of Neanderthal DNA within them. As humanity evolved, we lost the need for some organs in our bodies. These are known as vestigial structures. One famous vestigial structure is the appendix. Scientists have theorized that our early ancestors ate dense plant matter, such as leaves, which were hard to digest. It is thought that the appendix aided in the digestion of such plant material. However, as humanity developed and began cultivating more digestible crops, such as wheat, we no longer needed it. As you may know, when you get scared or are cold, the hairs on your body stick up and you get goosebumps. This is actually a vestigial reaction when millions of years ago our ancestors were covered in hair. By contracting the erector pili muscle, the hairs on your skin stick up, trapping in heat. Animals also do this as a defense mechanism in order to make them appear larger while in danger but is no longer relevant for humans as we have very little hair on our bodies. While these structures are considered obsolete today, that's not fully true considering that the fact that the appendix is not so vestigial after all. It still aids today in the digestion and absorption of food by storing bacteria. This means that our bodies have adapted to our environment and now have a new function for this appendage, but is not completely obsolete as we previously thought. Humans are a prime example of gene flow. The Earth is rich in genetic diversity when it comes to humanity. As people from different parts of the world had families together, the alleles carried over and in turn created an extremely diverse gene pool. An example of this gene flow is how people of European descent have few alleles that repel against malaria, while people of African origin have many alleles, such as the trait sickle cell anemia, to help fight against malaria. When people of both of these races ended up in America and intermingled, it was found that the frequencies of these alleles occurring were mixed in each of the populations. As humans developed all over the world, they gained certain traits unique to their location. An easily identifiable instance of this is skin color. For example, in order to avoid skin cancer, people in the hot sunny regions of Africa developed a dark skin pigmentation to better protect from the sun's rays. On the other hand, in cold climates such as in Europe, people developed fairer skin pigmentations in order to produce vitamin D through ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Basically, depending on where somebody lived, they gained certain characteristics, for example, such as skin pigmentation. This is an example of biogeography and how it affects the development of humans. Adaptations are different compared to variation, since adaptations affect entire species, while variation is defined as certain characteristics that some organism is better at than others. For example, some humans are faster at running than others, like Usain Bolt, compared to me. One of the most important adaptations in human history is the development of the opposable thumb. 
The ability to grasp objects was crucial in the evolution of humans. The development of the thumb, as with most things in evolution, took many, many years. Our earliest ancestors were ape-like, walking on all fours with little use for a flexible digit. As hominids developed, the need to hold objects such as tools became very important, so they gradually developed a complex finger in order to best suit the hominids' needs. Our ape counterparts also have opposable thumbs, but use them differently, more so for grasping branches, not for difficult functions. This is an example of a homologous structure, as they look similar, but perform different tasks. Another unique trait, possibly the most recognizable one, is the ability to speak. Language. Verbal communication is so important, as no other animal has this ability. By utilizing the power of speech, the human species has grown expansively, since communication is much more fluid and comprehensive. Humans lived in very harsh conditions, such as during the Ice Age. In order to survive in these conditions, humanity was forced to either adapt or die. And so we rapidly developed a heightened intellect through an expanded cranium. By creating a sophisticated system of communication, we gained a distinct survival advantage, as we could properly defend from the environment by hunting in groups and by protecting against natural disasters by creating villages and communities. In turn, the development of language became the beginning of human society. Hey guys, I'm Alex Calder and I'm going to cover John Mayer for you guys. Humans as a species are extremely resilient and unique to any other. Instead of adapting to their environment as any other animal would, we force the environment to set our own needs. When talking about fitness, look no further than our own species, as we have outcompeted everything else on this planet. To think that such an advanced form of life such as us evolved from monkeys running through trees is simply mind-blowing. And the most shocking part is that we haven't even finished evolving yet. In fact, we never will, because natural selection doesn't work that way. Organisms simply keep developing in order to best adapt to their environment. But if we create the ideal environment instead of adapting to a pre-existing one, then how do we continue to adapt and change if we have nothing that we need to adapt to? Wow, Alex Calder, you suck, man.